Hello everybody, this is going to be my uh, Loki episode 2 titled The Variant Recap and Review. And the episode starts off in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, year 1985. And we're at a Renaissance Festival, obviously. Uh, I personally love Renaissance Festivals, so I'm glad they showed this here. Uh, we meet um, a new, what's supposed to be like one of the big, you know, variant hunters, C20. But she gets possessed assumedly by the variant Loki that they are looking for. She takes out the other TVA hunters that are with her, and uh, a hooded figure grabs her and pulls her through a time portal. Now we cut to our Loki. He's reading a jet ski magazine at Mobius' desk, I assume. Miss um, Minutes is questioning about TVA like stuff, but Loki's more interested on whether she's like alive or just like a recording. Um, Mobius comes in, Gives Loki a TVA shirt, uh, so he at least looks the part too. He's working for the TVA now. Um, they go to a briefing uh, for a mission. B-15 explains what happened to C-20. She says they believe it's the variant Loki that they are looking for. They show various different uh, versions of Loki on a hollow image to show what they might be looking for, and uh, they begin to explain uh, the various like powers and abilities uh, expected of a Loki, and then our Loki pipes up. Uh, um, it's actually uh, duplicate casting, not illusion projection. <laughs> Pretty funny, kind of like meta comic book stuff. Uh, Mobius makes a joke, calling him Professor Loki, also like another, you know, comic book reference. Uh, they call they call uh, the smart Hulk Professor Hulk. <laughs> they arrive uh, back in 1985 in the Ren Fair, and they grill Loki on more you know TVA stuff. Uh, but it's not really important. They get into the tent where uh, where where we were earlier. B15 mentions they need to prune the timeline soon. And Loki begins to do his thing where he's like talks uh, as long as possible, trying to manipulate them, etc. Spinning some bullshit about how he's now a servant of a sacred timeline. But it ultimately doesn't work. Mobius looks through him, says he's just like playing games and stuff. Uh, next scene Mobius in is in Rome Slayer's office. Uh, and there's a lot of like weird stuff where Mobius doesn't understand how she has all this stuff in her office. They argue about Loki, how Loki is supposed to be the cause of destruction, but Mobius suggests that like, oh well maybe he's looking to like do something new. But you know, Renslayer is like, oh well the timekeepers have to decree it for him to change, etc. Mobius, uh, well before that, Mobius uh, says that, like, oh, well, if it doesn't work out, he'll delete Loki himself. But then, but then, uh, Mobius and Loki walk down a hallway. Loki's trying to explain what happened in the last mission. Mobius gets tired of it, and he says he only needs Loki to help catch the variant, the superior Loki, which, you know, of course, offends Loki. Loki gets tasked with doing some research to find the Loki. He tries to get info on the beginning of time and like the TVA and all that. But of course, he's only like allowed uh, files pertaining to himself. Oh, and you know the variant and uh, etc. He sees the file on the destruction of uh, Asgard. Gets like emotional for a bit, but. Uh, he has like a realization that the Loki variant is hiding out in apocalyptic events. Uh, Loki finds Mobius and does this whole thing where he's destroying Mobius' salad, explaining, you know, no matter what you do, if everything is destined for destruction, then you can do whatever you want, like before an apocalypse, without causing any variants. Loki and Mobius head to Pompeii. Mobius wants them to try something small, but Loki lets some goats out of their like uh, their cage, 
tells everyone they're about to die, etc. There's nothing they can do about it. Uh, and to Mobius is shocked there's like no uh, various energy. They head back to TVA. <clears throat> they have a short convo about jet skis. Uh, since, you know, Mobius has that magazine. But, you know, Loki is more pressing him on, you know, on the point of the TVA, where they come from, etc. Loki thinks it's outrageous, but uh, Mobius says it's just as strange as, like, Loki's origin. See, like, the TVA, like, everybody at the TVA, were they were created by the timekeepers to do this job, and that, like, means, like, there's, like, certain implications to that, I think. Like, how do the TVA, or the people working at the TVA, know that they're, tru that they're truly doing good if they're uh, working for, the, like, the, if they were made for and made by and working for these timekeepers. But uh, I think these are, like, questions that maybe Mobius is starting to think since Loki's kind of, like, putting these ideas in his head. Uh, Mobius has a breakthrough on the case. He, uh, Loki had mentioned how Mobius patronized him by calling the scared little boy, but Mobius remembers, uh, the boy with the blue candy from episode one, leading, uh, leading for them to try to find apocalyptic events with the Kablooey candy edit. They find a rocks cart warehouse, uh, with these variables. Mobius has to get permission from Judge Renslayer, but she begrudgingly like does give him clearance. After a briefing, they head to like the warehouse, which is being overtaken by a massive like storm, like a hurricane, uh, likely caused by climate change. Of course, they head to they head in and B B fifteen wants Loki with her instead of Mobius, and Mobius like. For tests, of course, but Loki says it's fine. You can trust me, and that's how, I, and that uh, he will earn their trust. Mobius just says, like, you know, why do people you can't trust always say trust me? Meanwhile, the ver the variant Loki is watching the cameras, and uh, you know, setting charges. Loki in B fifteen come across a man who is under, you know, the variant's influence. B-15 approaches him and he grabs her wrist and green energy, like you see right here, uh, transfers to her. Um, and then, like, they, uh, the two Lokis, like, talk. And they both recognize each other as Lokis. Mobius uh, and the other hunters look around the citizens who are sheltered there. Uh, and these people don't stand a chance because of the hurricane outside. Uh, one TVA is like roughing up the, some of them and Mobius stops them and says they're just like afraid people. The hunter says they should be afraid they're about to die. Uh, and you know, Mobius just says like not of us. They find C-20, and uh, she's in a back room just, like, whispering to herself, It's real, it's real, it's real. Back to the Lokis, our Loki described her magic as enchantments. He says it's a clever trick, but, like, an amateurish trick, of course. They have a bit over who is the more cowardly Loki. The variant transfer transfers to a rocks cart employee. Our Loki offers the variant a job as a lieutenant when he overthrows like the timekeepers. But the variant scoffs at it. It says they have no intention of overthrowing the TVA. While this is going on, C20 says she revealed the, to the variant how to find the timekeepers. The variant transfers to another uh like, person that I guess is, like, in the warehouse. The Loki, the Loki is fight for a bit, and our Loki gets thrown around. He does this cool thing where he, like, summons, like, a Roomba and hits him with it, but 
so so far our Loki kind of got like hand, got his ass handed to him, to him here. Uh, and it's revealed that there's time charges all over the warehouse. Uh, as they're activated, they like fall through these portals, and uh, the variant reveals herself a female version of Loki. A lot of people have been calling her Lady Loki, but this is more of, amal of an amalgamation of a few other characters, most and mostly resembles the Icol version of Loki than Lady Loki. Um, and we we now know that the official name for this character is Sylvie, Laufey daughter, and that's why she didn't want to be called Loki. And uh, one thing about like the Icol uh, Loki is that that character uh, would you know change like more regularly between male and female. So it's more more uh, like leaning into like the gender fluidity of uh, Loki. And uh, as the time charges are activated, they are sent to several different points in the time, well, in time and space. We say we see chaos at the TVA, hunters being dispatched everywhere, Renslayer herself getting involved, it looks like. Uh, and Sylvie walks through a portal, and our Loki walks in after her, and Mobius and or all the hunters are chasing after, but Loki ran through and the portal closed. That's how it ends. Uh, and I don't know, I'm really excited to see what happens next. It's about, that's it for this. Uh, I thought this was a pretty cool episode. Um, it really, really, uh, kind of escalated the situation quickly. Like, I feel, um, with this, they... They must have, like, the plan for a Secret Wars coming pretty soon. Uh, I know we have, like, Secret Invasion, too. So there's going to be a lot of, like, like multiverse and, like, alternate versions of characters and stuff going on. Really exciting. And I'm, I'm guessing in the next episode we're going to be uh, going around all the different... Uh, timelines that got messed up by uh all the time charges so yeah more exciting multiverse stuff and yeah i'm so far really really pleased with the loki series but anyway hope uh hope y'all liked it and uh like and subscribe and have a uh, stellar night